Hi, this is David at AppWorks. I'm going to make a new video here for our FileMaker Basics series. This video is going to go over subsummary parts. Subsummary parts are basically a way to group records, typically in a list view, like we have here. So, say you have a list of records and you want to sort of sort them, you know, the normal way. You can just sort by status, say. If I hit sort, it just puts them in alphabetical order. If I click sort for by priority, you can see here, it just sorts it by alphabetical order. But it doesn't really group them in the way that is easy to see. So, subsummaries um, come in really handy when uh, you want to group something. Um, and the way that you make them is you basically go into layout mode and you go uh, insert part. Pretty simple. And instead of choosing a navigation or header, um, you choose a subsummary part. And subsummaries only appear visible on the screen after you've sorted by a specific field. So, for example, if we want to have a subsummary part where we group our list view by status, and we choose to make a subsummary part when sorted by status, we choose that field. And uh, you can set some other settings here. Uh, usually where the page breaks will occur, things like that. But for now, we don't have to worry about that. Now you can choose to print it below or above. Um, the sum, sub summary can usually have a, a, the name of the grouping. Like we might put the name of the status in that sub summary part so we can see that this section of records will be such and st such status and the next section is a different status. Um, so in that case, we might want to put it above our group of records. But in some cases, you want to put the subsummary below the group of records if, for example, you want to summarize a total. So if you have a summary field in your table, you can total up the, net, the amount of, say, money um, in that group of records and stick that in the subsummary field. Let me show you that in a minute. So for now, we're going to say print above because we're going to make a heading, essentially, by status. So if you just take the status field, now we've got this subsummary part here. And if you double click on this, you can see that it's sorted by status. So let's cancel that. In this case, we're going to take a field and stick it right there. And we're going to leave that status field right there. Um, let's get rid of this heading. And let's go over here and make it actually uh, a larger point size. Let's choose um, 18 point minimal. And in fact, let's make it uh, bold as well. So now, when we sort this list of records by status, this subsummary part will show up. So if we just go back into browse mode, and we're sorted by priority, right? We've got sorted by alphabetically by priority. That's not that useful. If we sort by status now, we're going to suddenly see these subsummary parts show up. So now we've got approved. These are the records that are approved. These are the records that are awaiting approval. These are the ones that are canceled. These are the ones that are done. So that's a really nice and easy way to sort and group records however you like. Now, the cool thing is you can actually add more than one subsummary part. So if we go insert another part and we choose subsummary again, and this time we choose priority, we hit OK, and we want to print above. So let's take this and we'll just duplicate it over on this other subsummary, which is sorted by priority. And instead of status, we want to put the priority field in there. Let's get rid of that little label. And now, when we go back into browse mode, notice we still have our sorted by status groupings, subsummaries. If we just sort by, say, um, name, that's just going to make the subsummary parts disappear. So now we see no subsummaries. If we sort now by priority, you'll notice that we now have a new subsummary part that's by priority. High priority, low priority, and medium priority. If we choose status again, it changes the sort order and changes the subsummary part that we are able to see. So now we've got two different groupings. Now, a cool additional 
feature of subsummaries is that you can actually have more than one subsummary showing at once. So let's say we wanted to see uh, the status groupings and then also the priority within the status. We can actually go into layout mode. Let's just change priority, say, to slightly indented. And we're going to change it to um, uh, a gray color. Now, if we go into browse mode and we sort by status, we see this. If we go, however, by status and by priority, first by status and then by priority, we'll see that we have two subsummaries showing, approved, and they're all low priority. Here we've got a waiting approval. Some are high priority, one is low priority. Here we've got canceled, low priority, and medium priority. So you can see actually two separate subsummary parts. You can group by as many subsummary parts and sort orders as you'd like, actually. So that's a pretty simple way to make a nice uh, report. And depending, you can actually have the same layout be per repurposed for different reports just based on the way that you sort it and what subsummary parts you include. The one last part that you might want to know about for some summaries is how to actually summarize data in one of these parts. So for that, we would go to our uh, manage database, which is in here, and we'll look at the fields for here, and let's see if there's actually a... here. So a sum of the total estimated hours. This is a summary field. So there's a field called estimated hours, and it's hours. Um, it's just a number field. And we can have a summary field that refers to that and summarizes the data in the estimated hours field. If we place that field on here, let's first of all uh, swap out this field. Let's put this, the estimated hours field on here so we can see it. There's estimated hours. We'll put that up there. And we'll make that text white so we can see it. And now let's put a summary part in here. And in this case, we're going to add a new part, another subsummary. And this time, it's going to be summarized by status again. So instead of making this subsummary part show above, we're going to make it print below. So now you can see that we've got the status subsummary part up here and another status subsummary part down here. Our groupings will have two subsummary parts one by status and one underneath in which we're going to put the summarized total number of hours. So if we copy this over and we choose the summary, so only summary fields work this way, but if you put a summary field in a subsummary section, subsummary part, it will summarize the data in that group above it or below it. You can put this actually in the top or the bottom. So now when we go back to browse mode and we sort by just status this time, now you'll notice that we've got some hours here. This one has four hours and this one is going to be three hours estimated. Now you see the summary is seven hours. Here we have say one hour, two hours, three hours, and so on and so forth. And now the summarized data is in that summary part. So you can use this for dollar amounts if you want to summarize the total for a group of uh, purchases, say, or invoices. Um, you can see it's pretty straightforward. And that is how summary fields are used. And in fact, you can actually add one more part. Um, if you want, in the footer, you can actually add this summary field and summarize all of the records. So here at the bottom, you can actually see that this summary is a total of 50 and a half hours for all of these records that are showing. Um, and yet each summary section, each subsummary part, only s summarizes the records within that subsummary. So that's basically it. It's a super handy way to make real quick reports. Um, they can be very flexible. You can make one layout function for multiple different kinds of reports. And uh, I use it all the time, and I'm sure you will too. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you later.